Welcome back to this series of Light Reading video chats. Terry Sweeney here, contributing editor to Light Reading. Joining me now is uh, Sushin from Cisco, who is the leader of the optical product management team for the company. Sushin, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Terry. We are here to talk about subsea networks. Um, talk a bit, if you would, about the key trends that Cisco is seeing in subsea networks these days. So today, some of the things that we are seeing are um, around capacity. Capacity for sure continues to be the most important metric for subsea networks. And as we get to Shannon capacity limits, there have been a lot of new innovations around how to push capacity further. Um, there have been higher fiber count fiber systems uh, with SDM that have been deployed in the past year. Uh, C and L band is also something that's been considered for subsea. It's more prevalent in terrestrial though. And code and transponders, innovation continues on that front to push spectral efficiency even further than what we have today. In addition to that, another trend that we see is around openness. Uh, there's open cables now that can connect to any kind of SLTE terminals. Uh, the spectrum sharing that allows for the same SLT equipment to be connected to multiple users. And open APIs are also becoming a lot more important for subsea networks where we have a wide range of uh, vendors involved in the ecosystem. Along with openness, homogeneity is another ask that we see from operators. Uh, the ask to bring the terrestrial and the subsea networks together as well as collapse the IP and the optical layers in the network. And uh, there's good reasons to, to do this. You make the network simpler, uh, it's easier to operate, you get better resiliency, all good things for, uh, for your network. So those are some key things that we're seeing. And another uh, recent conversation that uh, we're seeing a lot of is the threat from Low, low Earth orbit satellite constellations and how they disrupt the subsea transport market. It's still very early days with the likes of Starlink and uh, Kuiper OneWeb and their project plans for constellations, but um, we need to wait and see how, how that evolves. There are latency benefits to the LEO, LEO constellations uh, but it, uh, it's not clear if we can get the same amount of capacity in that type of network compared to what we can do with uh, subsea cables today. Those are some of the things that uh, we're seeing today, Terry. So it sounds like a lot of market dynamics, but but also some innovations that, that Cisco is, is taking advantage of in, in this sector. Um, what are some of those innovations that uh, Cisco is driving in subsea networks? Today, it all starts with the coherent technology, which is uh, really central to optical networks. And uh, the Acacia and now Cisco team has been really pushing the technology to its limit. And we see that in the coherent interface module eight or the SIM eight announcement, uh, the launch that we did recently, uh, we expect to get at least 20% improvement in spectral efficiency with this new technology. And um, there's a lot of unique innovation that goes into the DSP, the optics, the, the RF components, and the way we package all that together to get you state-of-the-art performance with these products. Another area that we've been looking at very closely is seismic monitoring. Uh, the digital signal processors that go into the, the transponders and the, the terminal equipment generate a wealth of data that can reflect what's happening to light as it goes through the subsea fiber. And uh, it's very sensitive to any kind of mechanical disturbances. So what we're trying to do is make sure that the DSP, as well as the, the system, can report all the right set of metrics that indicate what's, what's happening to, um, uh, to light as it's uh, going through the fiber and do that with the right level of sensitivity and accuracy. And we think there's a lot of unique applications to, uh, to being able to 
manip manipulate and process this data once it's available. And finally, uh, what's really important to Cisco is the uh, convergence of routing and optical. We really believe that uh, route optical networking and uh, breaking up the silos that exist today with packet and optical networks, uh, that's really the key to making networks a lot more efficient and just simply better. I mean, if you look at it, uh, whether it's in terms of minimizing the equipment and ports you need, CapEx, um, making the network easier to operate, improving space and power, OpEx, and as well as better resiliency, you can get all those things with the RAD optical networking architecture that Cisco is driving. So those are some of the key innovations, Terry, that uh, we're working on. Thanks, Sushan. Um, question for you about uh, subseas embracing of, of, of general openness. We've, we've seen this with terrestrial networks, of course, but uh, a question for you is, is subsea embracing that, that same openness via capabilities like open software APIs, um, open line systems, uh, interoperable transponders, uh, basically the same sorts of dynamics that we've seen with terrestrial networking? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, Terry. The, um, so subsea cables have always been built um, with mechanisms in place to allow for upgrades to future generations of SLT equipment. And that's been the case for a very long time. So subsea networks have been ahead in terms of openness, I'd like to think. More recently, there's been open cables that uh, have been defined and almost every new cable system now is, is built with uh, the open cable approach in, in mind. And that allows you to connect any kind of SLD equipment uh, to the endpoints. And I'd like to think of it as one step ahead from what we see with open line systems and terrestrial networks, where you have a common line system that can handle any kind of transponder. In this case, it's um, you can connect any kind of line system or transponder to the wet plant cable itself. Interoperable transponders, um, that's something that we're seeing more of in terrestrial networks. I don't think it makes sense to take that to subsea networks yet because there is value to the extra spectral efficiency that you get from proprietary solutions at the moment. Longer term, that can change, but at least that's not something that we think um, is, is something you want to do today. Open APIs, just like um, networking, whether it's optical, um, routing, switching, we are seeing automation becoming more and more important. And a key part to automation is making sure you can operate the network in a vendor neutral model, uh, whether it's initial turn up, configuration, monitoring, and open APIs play a really important role in enabling that. And we see work in progress to bring that to the subsea ecosystem as well. Um, Great stuff, so Susan. Think, yeah. Lots of upside here, lots of potential clearly with subsea networking. Thanks so much for joining us for this video chat today. Thanks for the time, Terry. We've been talking with Sushin from Cisco, who's the leader of the optical product management team for the company. This has been Terry Sweeney with Light Reading. Thanks for joining us for this video chat. We'll see you next time.